I think we have a tendency to think about our silos and be it the materials that we've digitized ourselves here uh, and or you know, that we build up our own little collections online um, and that really what we need to do is to sit down and say how can we make our collections fit into the broader network of um, digitize resources? How do we break down the barriers between other archival repositories but also between museums and other cultural institutions? Because the, um, the differences are pretty um, narrow and arbitrary. Right now to me the really exciting collaboration is the one that, um, not an archival one, but the one centered around the Hathi Trust and the fact that we have so many institutions um, putting their books together and paying money to put their books together to build a um, freely accessible open resource um, um, that in some ways is a competitor to Google um, and yet and is driven by library values and interests on privacy and other things. I'm really glad you brought that up because of that recent article about the orphan works in the trust. And I was interested in, in your take on the amount of research that's needed to determine, you know, if there are copyright holders still around. That's a really interesting question. Of course, we faced that um, with, uh, with an SAA when the orphan works legislation was being proposed and we came up with our best practices for looking for a um, the owner of an or an unpublished orphan work, um, and the the response was it depends. With the Hattie Trust, um, I have an awful lot of confidence in Michigan and uh, what they can do. But um, how much you know? You have to balance the fact that trying to look for an author adds expense. So how far? do you want to go? And there already there's some interesting, um, I'm engaged in some email exchanges about what is the um, proper level of um, searching. Someone pointed out that on the, um, cur the first list of potential orphan work candidates um, from the Hadi Trust, there is a, one, a book by an individual who was involved in a famous lawsuit. Um, over one of his publications where um, he was trying to claim ownership of an idea and the court said no it's not um, and they said isn't this funny that uh, this has happened um, I sat down and said hmm, that's an unusual name and um, plugged it into um, the Social Security death index popped up saw that he died um, seven years ago in Sarasota, Florida, and then was able to look at the online obituaries and find his obituary, and uh, including the name of his widow and the name of his children, and they fortunately all had distinctive names. And, um, and so to my mind, it would be um, very easy to um, contact a member of the family and discover if the family actually owns the copyrights or they still belong to the publisher, do they have any idea? And the, res the reality is that they probably, a family wouldn't know um, and the publisher seems to have disappeared and so it probably is a case of um, no one knows what the rights are. Um, so it would be, it may be all sort of pointless. Um, but I think as an archivist, um, we're used to the idea of doing this sort of um, basic, almost genealogical sort of research as we're looking to um, potentially seek permissions for things, but also in order to um, locate the uh, possible collections for deposit. Um, and so to me, that just seems, uh, you know, looking at SSDI and obituary um, is sort of um, second nature. Um, the, uh, but to many of the librarians involved in the discussion, they thought this was going beyond the pale uh, because it wasn't readily available information on Google. Um, so who's right on this? Um, what's the, um, how much effort does one need to uh, invest in order to be fair to the copyright owner, um, especially if you're not trying to sell 
the work um, or republish it, but rather just making it available online as a um, free download um, for people potentially um, at Michigan who um, would have had access to the print book anyway. These are real interesting questions and one of the things that I think will be um, um, is really good about the Michigan experiment is that we'll come to some sort of um, consensus, uh, best practices on uh, how we should be and uh, what we should be doing.